Good evening, everyone. My name is Noor Jemmy, and I'm a program manager with the Graduate Student Services here in Lebeau. It is my honor to introduce our first TEDx speaker, Tony Wu. Tony is a first-year student, originally from China, and who has now made Philly his home for the next few years. He is currently studying finance and business analytics here at the College of Business. Tony will be sharing his story about the impact of performing arts and how it has positively revolutionized the society we live in today. Live in today. Please give him a round of applause. Twenty fifteen was a pretty important year. Why? Because Tony Wu decided to come to the United States. <laughs> well, not really. There were more important things. For example, same-sex marriage became legalized in the U.S., and also China abandoned its long-standing one-child policy. Of course, Hamilton and the American musical shook up the performing world. That year, history buffs sang. Alexander Hamilton, Lin Manuel Miranda, a Puerto Rican American composer, sang, "My name is Alexander Hamilton." Rappers like the Beat Digs, singers like Leslie Odom Jr., actors like Philip Sue, sang, "And there's a million things I haven't done," and I sang, "But just you wait." Before musical Hamilton. I had no interest in performing arts nor American history. After all, I just came to the United States for my secondary education, and there were bigger things to worry about, such as fitting in. Hamilton the Musical drew me into the world of performing arts, and it left an everlasting impression on myself. America has always been as diverse as the cast of the musical. That is the power of performing arts. It bridges the cultural differences and brings harmony to the greater community. Christopher Jackson, a black actor, was George Washington in the show. The Vedics, another black actor, portrayed Thomas Jefferson and Lafayette in the show. Philip Sue, a Korean actress, played the role of Eliza Schuyler, who was the daughter of a social elite. The mixed musical style, from rapping to classical. Drew people of different musical tastes together. There, in the Richard Rogers Theater in New York City on the 44th Street, the audience cheered together regardless of their musical preferences. History teachers around the country, from high schools and colleges, used parts of the musical to tell the story of the American Revolution. I even ended up writing a 42 pages paper on the musical. <laughs> the equality, inclusiveness. And diversity promoted by this musical and the social impact it had proved to me the power of performing arts. A year later, news headline featured, "Dear Evan Hansen, today is going to be a good day, and here's why." Dear Evan Hansen, a new musical became a social sensation. It addressed the mental health issue prevalent in high school students, and it also addressed the social media, both sides of social media, directly raised overall awareness. Looking back to the history of groundbreaking performances, in 2008, Next to Normal addressed PTSD. In 2005, In the Heights put、uh, described the struggle of living in a Bronx ghetto. In 1994, Rent shone light on the LGBTQ plus and HIV communities. Throughout the years, Les Mis, The Lion King, The Phantom of Opera, Wicked are the classicals revisited. And whenever they are pro,、uh, performed on stage, they all left a mark in our community. Performing arts truly played a vital role in the transformation of our society. I came to the United States in 2015, joined the Hill Murray School in Minneapolis, in Minnesota. I started my high school theater career building sets for Romeo and Juliet, and then I moved on stage for Annie. I was screaming, NYC. Every single time, every single night, when I go on stage, between cast and tag, I play all different types of roles in the theater department: stage manager, live board operator, sound board operator, room crew, male lead, dance captain, quarter section leader. In my short three years of high school, I did 15 different productions.
Just a month before I graduated from high school, I was sitting in the theater office chatting with my director. I asked him, Mr. V, do you remember the first time I walked into your office? He looked up from, from his laptop and immediately went, totally. Oh gosh, that was so awkward. You walked in here and started talking. I couldn't understand you, and I'm sure you weren't understanding me either. But somehow it worked out. Well, actually, it worked out quite well. Can you imagine an international student who could barely speak any English nearly four years ago, speaking in front of so many people today? It was performing arts. It was homery theater. It was my beloved theater community that encouraged me to adapt to a new language, to practice my English skill, and also to feel included by a group of awesome people that enabled me to stand confidently in front of all of you today. The first time I visited Philadelphia, I saw a plaque that says, Alexander Hamilton lived here, and immediately I decided to come to Drexel. <laughs> I got here on September 14th, 2018, and I walked around the city the same night. I was able to go to the Chinatown and the Citizens Bank Park during the welcome week. There were many thoughts running through my mind the first couple days here. Well, the streets are dirty. The people here are brutally blunt. The Phillies are not the Chicago Cubs. And the Flyers are not the Wilds. So, where was my Minnesota nice, and why can't I find Caribou Coffee, the coffee of true north, anywhere in Philadelphia? <laughs> Despite all that, there was one thing that was comforting. The performing arts scene in Philadelphia. The Walnut Street Theater was the oldest, uh, is the oldest theater in the entire Americas. And their performances are amazing. The Parkway Museum District over there quickly became one of my favorite neighborhoods in the entire United States. There are always concerts going on at the Fillmore, the Met, the Academy of Music, down by the Wells Fargo Center and the Lincoln Financial Field. I was able to discover the underground music scene with my friends who are in different bands. Earlier this year, the Laveau College of Business hosted a movie screening of Quest, a documentary about local music producers and musicians. The extremely diverse and vibrant art community draw my heart closer to the city and I came to love it as one of my own. But among all of those art forms, my favorite has to be the pop-up artists, street performers, aka buskers. They turn the streets into their unique way, unique place to share their passion for art with their communities. If you hear somebody singing right outside of the Reading Terminal Market, there's a good chance the singer is Jeremiah. Jeremiah has a passion for music and he chooses to sing right outside of the Reading Terminal every single day. He also goes into churches and orphanages to cheer the kids up. If you're into classical music, you can almost always find Ricky with his violin in the center city, in the city hall. Mike the Juggler creates his home show, engage the little kids in the Rittenhouse Square. IG is an aspiring architect who also plays cello on the street. They all have their unique experiences and stories, but they have one common goal, to entertain the stressed out city dwellers. They also have transformative power in our community. In particular, they attract people to see their performances and increase the food traffic in our public space. A challenge ahead of Philadelphia and many other cities are the disconnect between organizational effort and governmental effort in improving the public space and the general public. For example, the center this city district, the CCD, who manages almost all the parks in the center city area, spent $11 million turning a portion of the disused railroad into an urban green space called the Rail Park. It is a beautifully designed park at a super convenient location, just north of the Chinatown. However, hardly anyone is using it. The University City District spent three years and over $4.5 million turning the 40th Street Trolley Portal Station into what is called now the Trolley Portal Gardens, in hope that the garden can serve as a community center. Similar to the Rail Park, it is not used to its fullest potential. Curbstyle is my nonprofit that aims to dis uh, bridge that disconnect while supporting the local art community. 
a delightful performance at the Polyportal Gardens can bring in people to watch their, sh their shows and making the garden more vibrant. A small performing art event at the Real Park can attract both locals and tourists, generating real economic benefit. The value of public space is then elevated. It becomes a socio-economic hub that brings in the diverse community together. Through curb style, organizational effort will come to fruition, and performing arts can really transform our community in a tangible way. Our program is going to launch next month, giving everybody the opportunity to connect with the artist. But before that, go out to the street, find the artist, learn their stories. At the very least, I encourage you to take off your earbuds or the Beats Solo 3 wireless that you got with your MacBook <laughs> when you're in the city. Listen to the performances on the street. Watch them perform. Take in the beauty of Philadelphia. Let Philadelphia perform for you.